Hi, it's Thursday, the 3rd of October, and we're here to look at the astrology for, I say daily astrology. Yeah, it will be today, actually. So uh, everybody here has survived the eclipse. That's good. <laughs> and uh, let's see what happens after the eclipse, shall we? So I'll go to the share and oh, I managed to do it a little bit quicker today. Right. Hmm. And a story we have here as well. Okay, um, this is the sun. The sun is actually going to set very shortly. Um, and that's Mercury next to it. And then next to that is Juno. And then next to that is the moon. And they are all in Libra. Okay. Now, yesterday, when we had the eclipse, the moon, of course, was over here with the sun, but it's moved on. Now, it's moved on to oppose or be opposite to Chiron at 21 degrees of Aries. And this resonates the chiron Eris conjunction, which is the big one for next year. That, that, this, uh, it. This one symbolizes a lot of stuff for next year. I have spoken about it before. Um, I probably will mention it a couple of times now. But anyway, let, let's just stick to um, the plan for today. And that is to look at this, this stuff here. Right. So we've got Juno at 19 and the moon at 21. Now, the moon moves very quickly. It moves um, one degree every two hours um, and it only takes 28 days approximately to go all the way around the Earth. So when the moon is highlighting something, it's brief, but it's profound. The moon has left the side of Juno, but it's still close enough. Um, 21, there's only two degrees in that. And we've got this opposition to Chiron. So Juno is also in opposition to Chiron. Um, and it's that that I want to pick up on because the eclipse was would have been about something to do with relating. And that's because it's in Libra. OK, that's fair enough. Um, and the Libra Aries axis is about the world of one versus the world of two. It's about me and what I want. And it's about being in a relationship or relating with others and having to accept what others want. And it becomes a balancing act. OK, fine enough. Right. So the eclipse has stirred up all of the Earth's electromagnetic spectrum stuff right so you've got vast uh almost like rivers that run high uh, in the atmosphere big torrential things that carry quite often huge volumes of water so you could count them as sky rivers um and we've got a lot of ionized um material up there um a lot of um, neutrinos which is uh, invisible uh, particles um and altogether lots of um an electric universe lots of stuff to do with ele electromagnetic uh, field lines and um gravitation stuff and all that so um an eclipse um actually um for for the just the, the period that the eclipse is in um, in play, it allows cosmic rays to enter because the sun's solar activity keeps out cosmic rays. But then when the light goes out, cosmic rays can come in. So we get this swapping cosmic rays for um, for um, the the sun's rays. OK, now this happens anyway when the sun goes down, when it goes dark. But for it to happen in the middle of the day uh, for such a brief time creates havoc. OK, so we've got this atmosphere, which is 
seething and tossing and turning and energy is making its way down through the atmospheres and, and this atmosphere, the layers of the atmosphere. Um, and it's all sort of a bit crazy. Right. Add to that, we've now got um, the moon and Juno opposite to Chiron. This talks about relating again, but it, it brings something new to the table. So it's talking about some kind of fear. The moon is not the joyful, happy, extraordinarily confident uh, sun, the fire. It's the moon is water. Uh, it's feminine. And so it's it's uh, it's recluse, reclusive. It's um, it holds back. Uh, it's uh, it doesn't it cogitates and sort of like thinks about things and um, avoids and it is also um about a certain amount of fear there is a certain amount of fear that comes with the moon it makes us feel slightly uneasy okay uh, juno is all about relating in relationship um i would say that at the moment she's sitting in her own sign of libra i think juno rules libra but there we go okay now opposite to them is chiron and chiron's talking about <clears throat> a dis-ease the, the popular word for Chiron is always wounding, although it is um, more positive to say the wounds that make us wise. However, it is about something that isn't fair, isn't right, it's not our fault, and yet it hurts. And this can be a bitter type of a feeling, or it can be a rage, really, an out outrage. Um, at the unfairness of life um, or the unfairness of relating in relationship because we are on the axis of relating in relationship. Okay, Eris is adding her energy to this. These two don't actually go conjunct till next year. However, every time another planet gets into them at the moment, then they come alive. So Eris is adding her age and she's adding her um discord and disharmony and disruption okay so we're prolonging really the effect of the eclipse but actually i i, I think i could probably say that we're getting more into a difficulty straight after the eclipse which may resonate with people a little more than the eclipse did so the eclipse is usually something that gives you a jolt or a shock. Um, and it, it has it could have long term consequences. Um, however, it, it's often sort of a storm in a teacup. But the moon and Juno together lighting up Chiron and Eris, that's that's different. That's another taste of what's to come for next year and it's it's an opportunity for relating and relationship to learn something and to take something and deal with it in a steady way to be pragmatic to slow down um there is a great potential for just blasting off into a huge row at the moment fireworks um, we are capable of saying very fevered and feisty things in the heat of the moment. However, if we could just stay with the moon's steady approach and just be just slow down, take it easy and think about consequences and not try to get too wrapped up in an eruption because you feel so hurt. Um, yes, you feel hurt, but the eruption at the moment is probably not the best time. If, however, there's been an eruption. OK, <laughs> well, that's that then. Everything's out. <laughs> it's all on the table. People have said what you know they want to say. Fair enough. Because we are in that relationship energy, now's the time to also consider 
making changes, sticking it back together again, looking at it from the, uh, the, the other side, thinking about things from a different angle. Um, it, it's worth continuing on and plodding on with the issue and seeing if you can't sort it out um, whilst we've still got the energy which actually will support the actions around relating. So that, that's, uh, that's where I am with this one. Okay, well, by tomorrow, um, the moon will have moved into Scorpio. And I honestly think it's best done before the moon gets into Scorpio. At least when you're in air sign, you've got an ability to communicate better um, than you have when you've got the moon in Scorpio, because you've got I mean, the moon loves Scorpio. It's It's got beautiful brooding undertones and it's great for sexual relationships and this kind of thing. However, it makes it more difficult to communicate. We've still got the sun in Libra. Um, and I could argue, OK, well, with Mercury and the sun in Libra, they can t pick up and articulate and the moon can communicate the underground feelings. Yeah, I could go with that and say, actually, that, that yeah, that's, that, that sounds reasonable. But there's something about having the moon in Libra as well that makes it extra, um, gives it an extra ability in terms of communicating with a clear and logical head. <laughs> so anyway, pick your moments. Right. OK, so I'm going to say, uh, oh, I better stop sharing and say, right. Hello. Uh, there I am. Um, it, it was great to talk to you um, and um, we will have a video tomorrow. So uh, we'll. Um, yeah, let's hope everything's calmed down a bit then. And I can talk about something different. OK, nice to see you. Um, bye bye.